April 1st to 10 a.m. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. That was fun. Not every day a decade-long plan to apprehend multidimensional anomalies pans out so successfully. In fact, it was such a success, I don't even need to continue writing. I'm done. So why do I continue? Well, I suppose it's my victory lap. Or maybe I spent so much time trying to get inside of Jack's head that I felt a certain sense of duty to finish his blog entry. Don't worry, by the way. If you actually liked that guy for some reason, he's still alive. He just is tied up and gagged in the storage room, which is a lot more than I can say for the spirit of April Fool's Day present. She appeared right on time wearing a dress made out of red and yellow flowers. She didn't drive with the same grand entrance as her predecessor, and if it weren't for the fact that her head was actually that of a white deer skull, complete with a empty eye socket and missing lower jaw, I would have categorized her entrance as being perfectly ordinary. <laughs> I don't know how she talked with that setup, but she managed just fine. I let her go through the same movements as the other anomalies. The whole, you don't look like I was expecting, was starting to get really old, but whatever. She eventually got to the point, took my hand, and told me that we are going on a journey to see the ones I cared about most on this April Fool's Day. She thought that meant we'd arrived at Jack's home, where his sick roommate was adorning the home with birthday decorations and burning a candle. Yeah, I read the whole file. But instead, we went to exactly where the ones I cared about the most, my brother-in-arms at the Institute, were waiting. We arrived inside the containment field in the sub-basement of the Institute. The spirit didn't even get another word out before the shackles went into place. As the guards took her away for processing and testing, I approached my commander. He smiled at me and asked, Did you get what you were after? Benjamin's passcode, Echo Alpha Tango 9792 Victor. Excellent work. Together we approached the Faraday cage. I scanned my fingerprints on the monitor, opening the cage for the first time in one year. We found him slumped in the corner, muttering to himself over and over. Never gonna give you up, etc., etc. All right, boys and girls, that's about the last you'll ever hear from me. If we never see each other again, it'll be too soon. And remember, watch your back. And never trust anyone. Signed, Special Agent Brick Roscoe, Liskov Institute for Societal Advancement. April 1st, 2.58 a.m. Hey guys, it's Jack again. The real Jack, I mean. Yeah, I just finished reading all the crap the other guy wrote. I hope none of you fell for it. His attempts at imitating me are... Embarrassing, to say the least? I mean, voiced like a bag of rocks? What does that even mean? I digress. Mr. Roscoe jumped me last night, stumped me into the closet with nothing to keep myself occupied except a bunch of audiobooks. I'm entirely upset that I missed the spirits, but I'd be lying if I said the agent's account didn't make me feel sorry for the poor ghosts. Oh shit, that means I gotta explain to the next one why their friends are MIA. Crap. This really is the stupidest day of the entire year, isn't it? God, I wish I could have stayed home. Oh, great. Just heard three chimes. Wish me luck. April 1st, 3.30 a.m. They were actually pretty cool about it, but I had to fill out some paperwork, an incident report or something, and then they gave me a voucher for two free spirit journeys in the future, which I am almost positive I won't use. The spirit of April Fool's yet to come did show me the future, though, and it was exactly what I expected. Death, destruction, wanton violence, polar ice caps melting, all the puppies dying, uh, Brandon Fraser getting his Oscar revoked, you know, uh, the worst of the worst, and it's all somehow going to be my fault. So I asked the spirit, who, by the way, looked nothing like the Grim Reaper. No, it actually looked like the form of a little girl in a sundress carrying a six-foot scythe. If these images were the shadows of things that will be, or if they were the shadows of things that only may be. The spirit actually gave me an answer, though. The future is not set in stone. It can be avoided, but doing so will require either a lot of luck or a lot of snoo. I learned long ago that luck wasn't something I could ever count on, but I was a little confused by her statement. What's snoo? I asked. Oh, not much. What's new with you? Anyway, happy April Fool's Day, y'all. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. Quick reminder, I am also a narrator over at Chilling. If you guys like the stories that you're listening to here, then I'm sure you'll like the stories that you can listen to over at Chilling, because they're almost the same thing, I'm still narrating them, but you can select your own background music or background sounds, and you could select a whole mess of other narrators, such as Autumn Ivy, Swamp Dweller, and a bunch of my other friends. 
If you guys are interested in checking out Chilling App, starting up with a free trial, you can use the link in the description down below, or you can head over to thechillingapp.com and also use those free trials to win prizes from their giveaways. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, you guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months, and things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on. You guys are the ones who are keeping me sane, and I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. So, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Jeff Burnett, Diana Krause, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. B. Foster, Pettis Pleaser, Gaddis, Joseph Calarudo, Would It Be, Dante Kincaid, Boxhound 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Primark, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff the Killer's Cultist, Love You M&M, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Amber Cork, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sama High, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Arias, Captain Scurvy, Estabine, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sec Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinium, Lord Life's Best, Goran Trimagasy, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Michael Limchok, Dirk Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sam, Chelly J, Michael Mel, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Polly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Peter Chip, Acid System, Mom. Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, and Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Cory Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.